All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to Freshman 101 as NCRFs elevate your game. I am Faith Dimby, a current senior now at Florida A&M. Um, and who we have with us today, we have Henri Ma McKnight, who attends Morehouse College, a Morehouse man, if you've ever seen one. Um, and that is in Atlanta, Georgia. He is also a senior this year. Clap for that for class of 24. Um, he is a part of Morehouse's Business Association, their Sports Business Association, and their Chaos Agency, which is geared towards the success and assistance of young creatives. Um, I'm going to ask you a bit more about Chaos Agency because that sounds interesting. Um, and then alongside me, we also have Haley Samuels, who was a 2021 graduate of the Howard University. Um, she has her bachelor's in communications, and she is a current student at Columbia University going into your second year in sports management. The girl has been working, working hard in sports. It's been fun to watch, actually. Uh, <laughs> next, we have Kobe Ray Edney. I believe I'm saying the last name right. Okay. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and she is well, she was a media communication arts major with a fashion minor over at St. John's in New York, New York girly in the city. She graduated in 2023. Clap it up for our recent grads. Um, she was historian at her school theater group. She was communications chair for their fashion club, and she was director for the school's animal dance concert. She was also the manager at her school's recreation center and a group fitness instructor. Instructor, Kobe dances, y'all. She be moving. Um, so I'm old now, you know, I'm retired. <laughs> okay. That's what they all say. Um, <laughs> You're right. And then You're right. We also have <laughs> Tiana Owens, who went to Southern University a and in Louisiana, in the South, in the country. Got mad love for Louisiana. I should have went, but... Um, she graduated in 2023. She's now currently doing grad school at Louisiana State. And for both, her major is mass communications. So a lot of communication girlies. Love to see it. Um, and fun fact about Tiana, she is a woman of Delta Sigma Theta Incorporated. So um, love that. Love to see that. Love D9. Um, and then we also have Denise Parker, who recently committed. Mm, excuse me, who recently completed her master's online as a mother, a working mother, and anyone who has been around children for more than five seconds knows that's hard. Like, children are a lot. So we have to applaud that because, again, children, fun. Um, but so getting into our talk of Freshman 101, we as college students, as college grads, are going to be talking about what it was like as a freshman. Um, everyone remembers their freshman year of high school. College is different. It's a whole new world, whole new life, whole new experience. Um, so just in how that was, things that, you know, scared them, things that excited them, things that had them being like, oh, not necessarily bad, but different. Um, because we've all had those. We've all went to school somewhere, you know, different from home. So the culture shocks, all of the fun, nitty gritty of going to college. Um, so question number one is going to be, what was the first thing you noticed walking into class on your very first day? Anybody can answer, not everybody at once. Um, I'm just say going to a black college. First thing I noticed is a bunch of black kids in the class. HBCU living. I'm going to say the first thing I noticed was that there were a lot of people in my class. Interesting because my school was like kind of on the smaller side. So I was like, oh my gosh, there's like this many communications majors and it was people that I had seen at orientation so I, I was like shocked um for me I would say um the first thing that I noticed was more so like internal um first thing I noticed I wasn't as um, prepared as I thought I was and once I got to uh, class I seen everybody had like these different mugs and they had their water they had their laptop that was ready they was attentive sitting in the front I just I realized I wasn't as a I wasn't as ready as I thought I was, but I got my stuff together, so. Um, I noticed that it wasn't like as, I don't know, like scary as I thought it was gonna be. Like I walked in, I was like, okay, like high school kind of does prepare you. Like you you go and you sit in, it's 
kind of like the same setting like it can be more people but I definitely was just like terrified and like once I got in there I was fine like the anticipation of it was much worse than like actually going in there and like we were all kind of in the same boat everybody like was scared and nervous so I definitely felt like just years of school kind of prepares you to do more school like it's not as scary as you think right my first day honestly I had one class it was college algebra and the first thing I noticed my teacher was white I attend an HBCU so I was not prepared for wait let me back up I attend HBCU in Florida so I was genuinely not prepared for that um and it definitely you know was surprising but he's one of the best teachers love him real bad um he definitely helped I thought I was good at math and he showed me I was decent at math but I could be great at math um so definitely helped big ups from him because I needed some of those tips and tricks when I took stats so that was great um but I also noticed that a lot of people don't take school as seriously as I do um when it comes to like those general ed classes because people were walking into class and it's five minutes left and they walk in they sign their name walk right out and I was like whoa you're not gonna meet your teacher you're not gonna sit and see what the syllabus is about you're just gonna leave um so that definitely was surprising because I spent all of high school hearing oh well you can't do xyz that's not gonna fly in college and it's flying with really really bright colors um so it just was like crazy but um yeah I was like whoa I feel like I had the same experience but an opposite view because I went to a school where everybody took school so seriously and I was like this it doesn't have to be this serious like it doesn't <laughs> have to be like you got like you can do your schoolwork and like live life but like that's always how I've been so it was interesting to meet other people that were like very similar to me that were like I'm taking a day next week because I don't really feel like going. <laughs> and, and I was like you know what me too <laughs> and like we all still did good in class like it was very interesting to see like people who thought like me being like like school's important but it's not everything like if you don't have the capacity to get out of bed today then don't have a pizza. <laughs> I promise. Like, it's gonna can be- I add to some of course <laughs> well as a mom of a child who's in grade school, which is elementary, um, and at the time I was a working mom and also helping to take care of my my mother who was ailing at the time, and I already decided to go get my master's when she got sick because of what's happening in the healthcare industry. I have a master's in healthcare administration from Southern New Hampshire, and to work be a parent at that time I was a single parent and be a caretaker it was very difficult so my first day of class after being away from college for over 20 years because I graduated in 2001 so at that time it was probably 2019 when I got my going after my master's I literally signed up for an online course and I thought I was going to have an instruction base with interaction with students and teachers it was all online meaning interaction was through the message centers and papers were submitted it was a it was totally a shock so it was not what I expected for those adult learners thinking about going back to school it's a culture shock to get adjusted to the technology of going to school yeah my mom's went back to school I me and this lady had beef for a little bit because she did she decided to go to college when I decided to go to college and I feel like it's not fair because now you're graduating when I'm graduating and like yes it's cute shared moment but like dang my moment um but actually I really enjoyed it because we would call and we'd be on the phone and we'd be doing homework and we could just sit and complain together um so it actually was very cute and I loved it but she went back to school and she was like I have no idea what my teachers look like. I don't know what my class look, what how classmates look like. Like, how are you going to give me a group project? And I don't know these people. What am I supposed to do? Email them? And I was like, yes. And she was like, what is that going to do? And I was like, emailing them is going to be like texting them without your phone number. Like it's the same form of communication. And we literally had to sit there. We went back and forth for like an hour. Cause she was like, I don't understand how this is supposed to work. Like, how are we supposed to get anything done as a group project? And we're not meeting up. We're not seeing each other. 
And so it was very funny kind of seeing the difference when she was trying to do a group project and she was like, we need to meet up. We need to see each other versus how we do group projects. And we're just like, all right, text it. We're going to text who needs to do what part. Everybody do their part. We turn it in and we move on. Um, so it was really fun and interesting watching her go through that. So I definitely understand, you know, the technological differences because that was kind of, that was a lot to watch happen. Um <laughs> I was actually supposed to start my first day today um, for, of grad school, and it's been a long time since uh, my freshman year undergrad, so I, I can't really remember that first day, but I was anticipating grad school first day, and it got canceled because uh, our electricity had went out and stuff like that, but I was kind of like feeling like Haley where um nervous of how it was going to be but when I went to orientation people were you know were like reassuring me that everything's normal and you know just don't expect so much out of it okay question um because I started during COVID what was orientation like because we didn't get we didn't even get a virtual orientation um because we decided to have a tropical storm that same day of our virtual orientation so how how was it <laughs> how was the experience orientation was really fun it's like a party uh yeah that reminds me of how did you get to have a probate because I didn't get to have a probate because of COVID so I, could, I could relate to getting something taken away from me because of COVID but orientation like I know at Southern they they turn up like dances and it's it's really great good yeah, event the freshmen look like they had a really they fun it out well. it's like a whole program it's basically like an assembly like at school back in high school our freshman orientation this year was three days and I have a friend who's an orientation leader. I was like, take me to work with you. And she was like, I physically can't do that. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I was like, please, I just want to experience an orientation. And she was like, no, become an orientation leader. And I was like, oh, negative. Y'all do a lot. Um, yeah. but it looked fun. So I just kind of want to hear else's orientation. Yeah, orientation was like an extension of like admitted students day, which is like you don't have to you haven't like committed yet. And that was like in like March before we were supposed to go, maybe April, March or April before like you had to commit. Um and it was a lot of fun. Like like Tiana said, like it's just a big old party and like people are just taking you to different things. You have like the leaders that are taking you around, showing you like whether it be the city or like different parties that happen. So it just gives you like a taste of the culture and then once you're there, once orientation starts, it's also like a whole party and like they call it freshman week at Howard at least and you're there literally a week before everybody gets on campus and there's like an event after event after event after event. So it's really a time to get to know your classmates, get to know um, even like upperclassmen and just kind of like find your spot. That's where a lot of people meet like their forever friends like freshman week. Um, so it's just like a really cool time. I think it's no stress, no school. You're just like there getting to know your city, getting to know your campus. So. It's a pretty cool thing. Our freshman week was like, they announced our, the events for our freshman week. And then mm -hmm. it was weird. Actually, I got admitted and then it was freshman week. And then like two weeks after that, COVID. And I was like, are you kidding me? Because <laughs> it all happened like right after the other. And I was like, I'm so excited. I get to go to my number one school. And then they were like, you get to go, maybe. So. Yeah, that's, that. I can't imagine. I, I'm glad that like, now people can go back in person because that was like part of the reason I waited to start grad school. Like I waited a year later because like I'm not starting school online. I'm just not doing it. Like I refused to do it. I just like took a year because of that. So I can't imagine starting undergrad online. That's yeah. a whole different for the experience. Yeah, I graduated probably. online though. So I feel <laughs> you. I did graduate online. Yeah. I will finally have a I was blessed with um one semester before uh COVID started. So my that fall I went for one semester and it was a real good semester. And then the next semester had to stay home. But then at least after that, I was able to come back the next fall. But coming in, yeah, like she said, can't imagine. Like, that's so sad. Like, your first semester, that sucks having it online. And I remember when I, I was graduating right when COVID just began, like, just graduated and for my master's program. And I had uh, an internship lined up with Cedar sinai the hospital based in Los Angeles, one of the top medical centers. And they shut down my internship um, upon my graduation due to COVID. No prospects after that, because we were, went through a whole year of lockdowns. So it was really hard to transition to become in the career sector with no uh, prospects due to COVID. 
Yeah, COVID was bad for me. Um, I I was leaving high school during when it when it hit, and you know all the fun senior activities. That was no more. Uh, like suddenly it was just cut. Um, COVID came for me. It ain't lying. That was a battle. I feel like I lost for a minute. But um, coming into college, it was cool. Um, Morehouse is really like brotherly anyway. So like, I was always getting like emails and text messages and stuff like that from like alum and people that were already at the school. So it was, it was, I feel like it was a lot easier to take because I like got to, you know, take part in things early on, like online, but it wasn't the same at all, especially due to like the fact that the school has a lot of like, like history to it. The fact that my class was the one class that didn't get to do certain things the right way, it's just, it still blows me to this day, I ain't lying. But like, it, it's cool. It was it was a good little experience. Uh, I feel like it made me strong a stronger student. It made me uh, appreciate being in college more now. So it was it was good. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm glad it happened. I don't know. Still think about it. I mean, in a way, I'm glad because I got to focus. I got to spend the one year that I didn't work focusing on my academics. So it was nice. I got to see what that life was like. But um, as an introverted person, as someone who chooses not to go outside actively, man. I was lost. My sophomore year, everyone's like, oh, let's go here and let's go do this and let's go do that. And I'm, what is all of that? What is that? My roommate took me out and I was like, oh my goodness, this is a city for real. Like there's stuff to do. Not a lot. If you're coming to fame, you please understand. And no, the city has stuff to do, but not a whole lot. But I was like, I didn't know we had all this. I was so surprised. I was shocked. I was like, oh, the freshman year I never had. Um. So moving on, what did you find? Mm-hmm. How did you find yourself preparing for your first day of school and alongside that for the rest of, you know, your first school year? I'm going to be honest, for all of my go with the flow people out there, I I didn't. <laughs> I made sure I had a laptop and my little cute dorm decorations. And I just said, hope oh, this is enough. <laughs> And I made it through and it was great. <laughs> so um, because I know that like not all my teachers sent me the syllabus and like all this stuff. And there's like also I'm like a complete person. That, I'm like, there's other resources out there. So it's like I was like, I'm waiting to see what book they want, because then I can see if I can find a PDF version. And like I was like kind of educated in that way. So I was like, I'm waiting till I get there to like think about all this and do all this. And so right now I'm going to focus on my dorm (laughs) and like trying to survive across the country. So I'm the, the very chill, non um, planning type for those out there like that. And I made it okay. It's perfectly fine. I plan more for my dorm and not wanting to go to the store during COVID than I did for my academics, because if I couldn't find it and I couldn't find it with the school, it was not meant for me to have. Why are you asking for me? Why are you asking me for something I don't have the resources for? And you're not giving me the resources. Right. I'm like, so. Right. I was like, I didn't get the book, but I made sure I had a whole like Costco size of Nutrigrain bars in my dorm. <laughs> I'm like, the priorities. <laughs> I will make the argument, Colby, that you actually did prepare because I feel like, and this is, forgive me if this is a stretch, but I feel like in college, like it's a lot of people's first time like being like around that many people all the time and just kind of like being on your own so like preparing your space and knowing that like okay when you do need to like buckle down you do need to get your stuff done or you need some like alone time or you need whatever to get yourself back right like that space is really important because a lot of college is just like common areas and like common space and like sometimes you need that time to just kind of do thing reset study or whatever so like preparing your space is important like I'm gonna I'll give you your props there like i I think that's not a bad way to prepare um, and just like have your stuff ready. Like, I'm, I'm just saying like to, to make Girl. that argument, you know what I mean? Like, I right. think that was really important for me to be able to come back and be comfortable. Be like, all right, let me get my mind right. Like, maybe I don't want to be the library, but I don't want to be over here. Like, I just want to be in my own room. And that was like comfortable yeah. for me. So, and I think yeah. making friends too was the way I prepared. Like during that freshman week and knowing like, girl like what's this assignment like being able to like use your community as a resource is huge like when you first get there because nobody knows what they're doing so when you can ask yeah. people and kind of just like get through it together I think that's key I think, you know, for, um, oh go ahead oh, I'm sorry oh I was gonna say going into freshman year um I don't think 
a lot of people uh, was prepared. You just kind of go with the flow, jump into it and learning um, as you go. And then um, like the, the next semesters you come back, you know how to and what to look forward to and prepare. Yeah, and, and I agree with, it. you know, it's just hard to kind of figure out your balance when you have so much on your plate. I mean, being a parent, also, you know, working and trying to balance all that out and try to find time for your studies and making yourself feel like you're getting it, an adequate amount of sleep and time to yourself to focus on your concentrated major for your master's program or your doctorate program is really difficult. But when you come into a program like that, you already know more what you want to do because you decided to get a master's. And if you wait a long time, like I did, like I waited like over 15 years to get a master's from my undergrad. And it took me a, a while to figure that out. So I knew what I was expecting and I knew what I wanted out of it. I just wanted to make sure I got the best situation. So I planned, even though it was online, I planned time to not be home for my assignments because being home was distractions for me. It was like my son, my mom, somebody was calling me or asking for my attention. So I planned my day to be at a library and there's tons of public libraries. If you're online uh, studying, you don't have your campus to study at and go to the campus library. I went to the online, I went, um, I went to the um, library that is part of the city like you know the cities that are surrounding my neighborhood or where I worked and it was fabulous and I always had my favorite spot so I survived through the library <laughs> it was amazing yeah, yeah the library is a safe space to um, really get your mind together and um, help you study harder it's best to get out the house because the house gets you like too comfortable and lazy yeah yeah I totally agree and if you live somewhere like Especially that first semester, I know a lot of people like travel places that are not warm climates all year long. So like you can definitely take advantage of like campus that first semester, just like all the beautiful spots. Most like college campuses like are aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> then you can go like find some grass to sit on and like study and just be outside. And I definitely suggest like taking advantage of that. If you go somewhere that's going to get cold, like once November hits, like you really want to take advantage of that sun and just like enjoying campus while you can because it gets real it gets real brutal in certain areas definitely on the east coast COVID can attest to that <laughs> it gets cold but I do I think from coming from like a hot state I do enjoy like the cold so I always like found my inside sanctuary like I found that along with like my outside sanctuary because then you really appreciate the outside more like when it gets nice it's like oh my god it's like a yeah yeah for sure <laughs> like for I sure just, find your spots yeah i just moved into I my think that's like patio what'd you say faith oh um that i like just moved into my apartment and i've been on my patio all the time like i love mm -hmm. outside and the sun hits the patio just so perfectly and it's just oh yeah yeah it's important to find you a little spot um i say that makes me more productive when I'm mm -hmm. inside all day, I, I tend to be more like lazy and laid back and pull back. Um, everybody's not like this, but you know, me personally, I feel like for people out there that know, like if you get outside, you're gonna be more productive. I feel like you most mm -hmm. definitely should venture out, probably do do some homework at like a park or something like that. Um, yeah, I feel like it is very important to try and just focus in on what you like the places that you work best at and stick to going to those places. Yeah. Or like, I don't know if this happened with anyone else. I got real comfortable in the library. Like a lot of my friends were engineering majors and that is where I messed up because they're in there all night. I'm a psych major. Right. I didn't need to be there that long. So I managed yeah. to get really comfortable in the library. So if I was there and they weren't working, I wasn't working. Like we were just hanging out in the library. So we found other places where we can go and study. If we're like, okay, we've been in the library two hours no work's gotten done let's move on um so also having backup spots because sometimes you will find yourself getting comfortable in those study spots because it just you're there so long that it's like ah why not yeah, yeah you definitely need you definitely need backup oh i'm sorry Go on. I know, my, my fault Mr. you got you good um i was gonna say you definitely need backup spots especially if somebody takes your spot and then you're like what i was planning to study here i didn't get here early enough so definitely have another alternative that's close by so you don't get discouraged from not studying or continue on with your your work 
Yeah. Yeah, definitely find an alternative. And don't be afraid to like try to go new places either. Cause like Faith just said, you can get caught up in going to like the same spot all the time. So when you get like real comfortable, you be just as lazy there as you be in your crib. So like you could you I feel like it's important. Me personally, I change them up like every so often. I'll go like sometimes I go to the library, sometimes I go to the park just to get a new scenery of things, you know, keep yourself up to speed. Or I think like one time we found ourselves driving around trying to find different places where a bunch of people were working. Um and by our school, there's a Publix, and Publix is a grocery store in the South, if y'all aren't in the South. Um, and above the store, they have a section where you can sit and work, kind of like at Starbucks. Um, and it's literally down the street. So we went there, and everyone was studying, because across the street from FAMU is also Florida State. So it was just a mix of students just studying. And we were like, okay, we're going to sit here, and we're going to watch all the other people study, and that's going to get us to study, because... I don't want to just watch people work um, when I have work right in front of me. So we would do that. And if that was dead, we'd find a Starbucks or we'd find some type of cafe or something where someone else was working. Cause sometimes that's your motivator of like, when you're sitting there just lazing around and everyone else is working, you're like, okay, well maybe I should be doing something. So that also really, really helps. Um, being around other people who weren't working with me who wouldn't be talking to me who wouldn't be distracting me but they were working so I needed to be working yeah having a group of friends or people around you definitely motivates you to do your work if they're not your like talkative friends that distracts you but if, if you're both like on a computer computer seriously doing work then that will motivate you to get it done yeah so yeah. I like uh having I like having the friends I, or people in your class or on your in your study to make a form of study group like for example like if you have a challenging subject I remember in my undergrad I had challenging subjects such as you know math and you know my major was theater I, I wasn't going to use math other than to count my money but <laughs> um so when I had difficult classes in my undergrad, I wanted to make sure that I surround myself around people who were a little smarter than me in that subject. And so those became my friends throughout college. And it was that group that helped me get me through, not to use them, you can use people in college. You don't want to do that because it will come back at you. But you want to have a group of friends who can help you stay focused and get you through each semester, especially if you are in a challenging class that is you know, you're up against a lot of odds. Now online, it's a little different. Online, you have to find that community. And my best resource online was my my college counselor. She helped me and my librarian. They helped me. They became my community, especially when I was writing papers in an, a style format such as APA um, that was um, outside what I was what I learned growing up, which was MLA. So I needed that community of support. So that was a big tip. Yeah. Yeah, that's so important. My fault. No, you're good. You got it. Yeah. Um, yeah, your support system. Um, I say build a support system that's well built around you, like at who you are as a person. Um, that's I feel like that's major. That's almost just as important as like anything. Like anything, anything that you think is the highest of importance, that's probably like number two, in my opinion. Um, I always felt like I always I was always raised like um if you're the best person in your circle, then you're in the wrong circle. You know what I mean? You got to be around people that motivate you, you know, to do better. Um, me personally, I have, all my friends are different. Um, just like um, Miss Denise just said, everybody's different, uh, good at different things. I got one friend that I can go to school about. I got another friend that I can go to like, um, about mental health, about, I got, an, I got another friend that, you know, that I could just sit around and talk, talk about nothing when I want to just be silly or whatever the case may be. You gotta have those certain people for certain things, not to like like Ms. Denise said, not to necessarily use them, but ultimately it's like you gotta make your foundation and your 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 um world around you to be best suit you. You know what I mean? You can't be hanging out with whoever is easiest to hang out with. No, you gotta hang out with somebody who's actually gonna help you, somebody who's actually gonna motivate you to do better. So I feel like building your circle is very, very important in college, and that's something that you should start on right away. Because um, people are finding clicks quick, <laughs> very, very quick. So ultimately, you know, you should you should really venture out, especially if you're like a um, person who stays to yourself. I'm one of those people who really stayed to myself. And I didn't realize that until it wasn't until I got like 
a few friends. Like I always had friends and stuff, but like it wasn't until I got like a group of friends that I really, really understood. Like, you know, it's certain things about myself that I could be, you know, that I could do better. You know what I'm saying? Like when you by yourself, you only see the good things about yourself. Like sometimes you see the bad stuff, but you don't see it as bad as you should. You know what I mean? So it's good to get a circle around you. Isn't it funny though? Isn't it funny though? Like if you go to like school, you'll find that group of people who were just hanging out in that one area all the time. All the time. And you never, you never know if they went to class or not. You're mm -hmm. like, do you guys go to class? Yeah, like if you guys yeah. are here, we called it when I was at Long Beach State in my undergrad. We called it the stoop. It was Word. right by the psych building. It was where all you know us, us, us kind of people. We us. You know, people like look like us were yeah. hanging out. And I remember I was in the dance department so I, and the theater department. So each department was across the campus. It was like yards, yards. I had to take a bus to get to one side of the campus. And the, there was times where I had to run past the stoop. And it was the same people all day. Like, this was the spot. And I had classes all the time where I was going back and forth. I was like, these same people have been at this stoop all day. Word. What's up? So watch out that you don't get caught up in that. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely people like that. Um, I call them, um, I call them side characters. Um, yes. Every episode of your life, they always in the same spot. They always wearing the same thing, talking about the same thing, doing the same thing over and over again. I call them side characters. So it's easy to become a side character in college though. So don't become one of those, especially where you can. Um, one thing that I found very, very helpful is finding people outside of your major. Um, because it's super easy to find people in your classes, especially your major classes, and you all get together and you study, and that's cool, it's great. But me personally, I not only am easily distracted, I am the distraction. I will distract you, I will talk to you, I am that person. Um, but my sophomore year, one of my roommates was an engineering major, and I would hang out with her. And therefore, I would hang out with her classmates. And so when I would hang out with them, I found myself doing the best work because I managed to talk to all of my teachers and they expected a lot out of me. So they made me do a whole lot of extra work. Um, you know, you get voluntold to do stuff sometimes. So it was like, I kind of felt like I had to go above and beyond for a lot of my classes. And I was really able to sit and focus and do that because I'm sitting with other people who are sitting and focusing on doing work, but I'm not trying to distract them too much because their work is hard. I don't know if anyone has ever sat with an engineering major and looked at a singular problem that they have on their homework it's a lot and I'm not trying to distract you from doing that because then you're going to look at me and say you do it and I'm not going to do that um so it definitely helps finding people outside of your major or who you feel like are in a subject that's harder than you so then you're a little intimidated to distract them and you focus on your work a little harder or just for when you have classes that may relate to their major and you're like hey I don't understand this can you help me or you're like hey my teacher is awful at explaining things can you help me um because that also is extremely helpful um but also just getting different perspectives in life um I have one friend she's a social work major our majors aren't that different so I'm like all right cool and she was explaining stuff to me and I was just like whoa that's I didn't think about that that's kind of crazy I wish I did um I feel like I'm in the wrong major am I no but did that sound exciting and interesting yes um so kind of just to get that different perspective on different things um because you may think you know something about yourself or you may think you're set in stone about something and you're not. But also it's kind of just like exploring to see like you might be in the right area, but you might be able to add to it. You might be able to, you know, take away different things from different people and be like, you know, this can kind of add to the journey that I want to create. Or what if I want to go on like a little side quest and see what this is like, you know? Um, so it's great to kind of have that experiences with different people. So definitely look for people who are outside of your major who can, you know, help push you and, you know, guide you into different circles and experiences. Yeah, I also um, found myself like connecting with people outside my major, like most of the people in my major, I just thought of them as just my classmates. And I made more friends in different majors. And you just never know when you would need them for like a project or just knowing people or them putting you on to a certain teacher or some classwork they may know about. So it's just ha good having connections all around campus. Like, you know, you're looking for a certain person that does this, like, oh, I know such and such from that building, you know? Mm -hmm. 
And then also on top of that, you don't know who's in what organizations on campus. Like a lot of things are major based, but not everything. So different organizations can be have different events and you're going to hear about them because you know about all these different people. Um, people are more than just their major. They have different hobbies and aspects to themselves that, you know, you can connect with. So honestly, meeting people outside of my major helped get me out of my shell a lot and into a bunch of different events and clubs and organizations. So it's definitely great. And it definitely helps you get more involved on campus just in general with your own hobbies and your own, you know, little niche groups that you might want to join that have absolutely nothing to do with your major. You're going to keep meeting people through other people and like that's kind of how you build your connections in um, college friends through friends literally all righty next question um so did you have a major change if you did why if you did not but you thought about it why didn't you change I'm fortunate enough um, to not change my major. Uh, I just connected with it. Um, growing up, my family like used to tell me that I knew a lot about like um, history and celebrity type entertainment gossip or different things. And they would be like, oh, you should um, be into like journalism or like TMZ type stuff. So uh, when I found out about the major, like I couldn't think of anything else that I could relate to. But I, I, I always say if I knew about minors that I probably would have did psychology. But besides that, like I really liked my major, didn't see me having no issue with it or no need to um, change it. And I plus I didn't, when I used to hear about when I was younger, having to keep starting over, I just didn't want to do that. Like, you know, with um, setting myself back for graduation and different things, I wanted to make sure that I was going to be on track. So I also, I didn't have a major change, but I will say if I were to do it again, I would have been a graphic design major or minor, but it wasn't advertised to us or available like at my school until I was like a junior. So it was like too late because that is like one element of like what I do now that I enjoy doing that I know I could be better at. So if I were to go back, I would maybe change my major but it like wasn't available so I like stuck with like what I majored in and I enjoyed it obviously so I tried to teach to graphic design and they literally said no they were like what if you couldn't do that like what if that just wasn't an option um so then I tried to go with like fine arts or journalism and they were like what if we changed your counselor and just never submitted the forms and now it's my senior year so it's literally too late I have 30 credits left there's I mean, no that's a tip in itself. Like, make sure you stay on your counselors in college. Like, don't always expect them to. Unfortunately, you should be able to, like, expect them to do everything that they say. But sometimes you do just have to, like, stay on them. Like, hey, did you do this? Did you do that? But, like, I, I went not undecided. When I decided, like, I really didn't know. I knew what I did not want to do, which is a big part of figuring it out is knowing what you cannot stand. Um, and I kind of, they had like course, um, they had like degree sheets, basically. You can like look at each, what it took to get each degree. And so like I was in the counselor's office, I was looking at each, like, nope, can't do that. Nope, can't do that. I don't take that class, that class, that class. And same thing kind of as Tiana, I was like, oh, like this is kind of like the lane I see myself in. And I wanted to go to law school. So they had a legal communications major. It's like, oh, this sounds like kind of in my lane. And then I switched it to public relations because I just felt like, I can do more with it. Like if I decided not to go to law school, I felt like I could do more with that PR major than I could with the legal communications, but I was still in the same like school of communication. So it wasn't that hard to switch. Like it didn't set me back mm -hmm. or anything. A lot of like my prerequisites uh, were the same. So that's kind of like how it works for me. And then I loved it. It wound up being like the right thing for me and staying in like SOC was the best choice that I made. So. For me, um, I did not change my major. Um, I went in business administration, made it all the way here, business administration. Um, I came in, though, thinking I was going to do a completely different thing with my major than I want to do now. Um, when I came in, I wanted to be um, like somewhat of a sports agent. And it wasn't until um, I, I got into different clubs and I uh, had different experiences, ran into different people that I kind of realized that being an agent wasn't at all really what I, what I wanted, really what I wanted to do. Um, I really just wanted to be around the game. You know, I wanted to be around sports, but I didn't really, really want to be an agent. Um, now I'm more so geared towards uh, sports journalism in a sense, um, the business of that. 
um I kept the business um I kept the business major because I more so wanted to branch off and to do different things. And I feel like with a business major and with a business degree, it's easier to do that to branch off or whatever. But um I did think about switching to journalism um last year. And it, with Morehouse, it's just too much of a process. So I just um I kind of made a different way with certain things and I have a plan in, in order now. So everything worked out smooth. So yeah. Okay. So it kind of sounds like everyone had an idea um going in. Well, I didn't get to say anything. Hold up. I, so I had a major sorry. switch. I, I had a major when switch. She finish, when she finishes, I want to um give advice uh for like I know I personally know a lot of people that did switch their major. So like even though we all um didn't do it, I know a lot of people and I could say something about it. But Miss Denise could go first. Oh, thank you. I appreciate you guys. I did switch majors in undergrad. So I went to high school for the arts and I wanted to, I knew that my profession as an actress or a dancer was probably not going to get me tons of money at the first uh, round. So I decided to major in psychology to help people and serve. I went into my first psych class in my general education and I was totally just lost. I did not like the technical science based information on helping people. I just, I couldn't get with it. If I would have stuck with it, I probably would have got through, but, but I didn't. And then I took a lot of Black Studies classes, and I went to Long Beach State at the time, and that was where Dr. Malana Karanga was the head of the Black Studies Department, and he was um, the founder of Kwanzaa. So after taking a class with him, I was like, ooh, Black Studies, I'm going to do that. So I switched again in a semester if I, you know, like there was a time where it, it was a little short gap where you can kind of play with different majors. And so I considered switching to black studies. In my mind, I switched to black studies and I was still a psych major. But once I got down to it, I went back to my first passion, which was theater and dance. And I switched to dance, got, was all in with dance and uh, forget, forgot about psychology, dropped that as a minor or a major, whatever I was doing at the time. And then, and then I stuck with that and then added theater as my final piece to uh, graduate. It was a lot, a lot of switching and a lot of uh, part of the reason, especially in dance, I had a lot of issues with building rapport with my instructors. So sometimes when I have, when you have a lot of, you know, you know, communication issues or trying to keep up with just your classes and your studies, sometimes you can find it too challenging and you might want to switch a major. A lot of people switch majors because it's too challenging. So I couldn't take the challenge of a lot of these different psychology and, you know, the prerequisites for, you know, all that. So I kept switching and switching. So I probably switched three times before I settled on my major and I went back to my first love. So, um, yeah, I would say for um for those who thinking about switching majors, it's okay as long as you do it early enough because some people are lucky enough to have a smooth transition um with your prereqs being the same, you know, uh on the list, but um get like if you're not sure what you want to do, take your freshman year to figure out if you like your major and after that it's going to probably be a while to um get locked into it. But it's okay if you switch your major because you you want to be make sure you're doing something that you're happy and passionate about. Because if not, you will not feel motivated to get your schoolwork done. But take freshman year to figure out if you really like your major and if that's what you want to do. And uh, make sure you're not advising yourself because that's what I end up doing later on. I got lucky to pay attention and still graduate on time. But it was a little bit uh, hard trying to make sure I do doing everything right and um, don't you know, get on the wrong path. So um, still stick to your um, advisors and just look at that track sheet. That track sheet really going to help you out. Um, On note with that, your advisors can be wrong and your advisors may say, hey, take this class and you know you're not going to be good in that class. Don't take that class. Please speak up for yourself. Please, please, please speak up for yourself. Because freshman year, I looked at my advisor because I went in with certain credits and I took stats and she was like, cool, you need a math course. We're going to put you in calculus. And I looked at that lady and I said, they tried to put me in calculus in high school. And you know what I did? I didn't go because I'm not doing calculus because in high school, I told them don't put me in calculus and they did it anyway. Um, so 
speak up for yourself so you don't take classes that you know are not going to be helpful for you and not in a way that you don't want to challenge yourself but like I knew I wasn't going to need calculus later down the line I knew since I was not going on a neuropsych track there was no need for me to take anything harder than stats um and the only reason I agreed to taking stats is because I wanted to do research so if you have an idea of what you want to do and you know that there are classes that they're trying to put you in that you don't need to be in that you're not going to succeed in don't take those classes um now if you just don't want the challenge of a course I'm going to need you to reevaluate that one because you're in college courses are going to be hard you're going to struggle there's going to be challenges um so if there's a course you need, but you just don't really want to take it, you can put it off a little bit cool, but you're still going to need to take that challenging course because it's what it's it's part of your course map. Like you're going to need it at some point. Kobe Ray, your dog is so cute. Um, sorry. Oh, thanks. She was, I was trying to keep her away, but she didn't want to stay away. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's okay. Yeah. I agree with um not needing to take some classes because some of the classes I took freshman year it was like um I I actually didn't need them but I ended up using them as an as electives to be to count for you know to graduate and um I forgot what else it, what else was it that you had just said I forgot uh, what it was it's like you're gonna have challenging courses but there are some challenging courses oh you- putting stuff putting classes on hold because I definitely did that they weren't putting me in math and English so I started taking that late and guys don't do that get that out the way because I was taking math my last two semesters praying that I passed them and to still graduate on time so just knock those classes out the way so you could get like closer to only taking your major classes it's so fun knocking out all your prereqs and just taking your major classes yes please if you can knock out the prereqs and like I think it was Faith that said this about like meeting people that are not in your major because like an example of like, I had to take two semesters of econ and I was just like, yeah, this is really hard. Like the beginning parts of econ, like the simple facts are like really simple. And then you start getting into like the calculations of it, of, like gross domestic products. And you're like, what in the heck am I doing right now? So I was able to like you know hit some people up like hey like what's going on here and they were able to like help me get through that and like I don't know how I would have gotten through if I didn't have friends that were like econ majors or more like math majors and they were able to kind of help me through that so I think that's super key too is just like knowing where your people are and then also asking people too like what professors may be like easier to understand or like what classes are a little bit easier because sometimes they vary too like you can have a prerequisite and it could be like one or the other it can be like this type of like English class or, you know, you can kind of like pick and choose. So I think that's key too, is like finding people that have done it before and asking like, hey, like, how did you get through this? Or like, who was the best professor for this? You know, et cetera. Yeah. Um, I don't know. One thing about me when it came to like my course map, I, again, I stated my counselor has changed every year I've been at school. So I definitely was like really harping in and paying attention to my course map. I I was like, listen, y'all keep changing my counselor. I'm going to the chair of the department because I need to know what I need to graduate on time because time is money and classes are money and college is money. And I, why am I giving you money to be in extra classes when y'all played with my time and y'all played with my classes? I'm not doing that. So I got to know the chair. I got to know my teachers. I got to know teachers who used to be counselors. I was getting to know people in at the department that could tell me what it is I needed to graduate, what classes I needed to take, what classes were being offered, because I'm graduating on time. Fam has a saying, in and out in four, and I was going to follow it because, no, um, my mom was not going to graduate before me. Well, she is anyway, but not by much. Um, but yeah, so I did the um I did the exact same thing. I kind of like after freshman year, I didn't know who my advisor was anymore. So I just um finally went to the chair of my department and he kind of like set me straight and listed every class that I should take in order um the next semesters and I was good from there. So so just getting to know your chair and all the teachers in your department so they can um really set you straight. Yeah. That's great advice. That's great advice. A lot of people, um, I'm trying to come back on camera. Um, it's been difficult. Sorry about that. The technical difficulties. Um, 
a lot of people on on our campuses, we don't really utilize all the resources. We don't talk to our chairs. We kind of just kind of hidden figures in school. Like we just go to class and then we go to our dorms or home and just focus on our friends that are our age bracket. But that's a problem. You really need to get to know your advisors and your faculty that support you. I always tell college students who I'm, I'm working with that your tuition is paying their salaries use them. And if you don't, it's like you wasted a ton of free resources or you have already paid for resources. Like they're there to support you. And if they can't support you, then you have a right to go above their head and ask for additional support regarding whatever it is you need and re related to your studies, your major, understanding you where you're going to end up upon graduation. It's really hard to kind of figure that out. And I found that undergrad you're not really focused on your major until you finish those general ed. So you're really not focused on being serious until you get into your major classes. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but that's how a lot of people are. They party hard or they just are distracted too much or they just don't get it until they get to what is the equivalent to an 11th grade in college, which is your junior year. And you're like, oh, I got to focus. I got to get an internship. I got to I got to find a way you're just starting to really connect to it. And in master's programs, everything is focused because everything is driven on you can prove your outcomes. There's no prereq. I mean, there's prerequisites, but it's different. It's just way different of how you support. I don't know about you, Haley. Like, have you experienced things different, like being in a master's program versus a undergrad program? It's just like night and day of the focus. Is she there? Mm -hmm. Haley there? So we can come back to Haley when she's available because I do want to hit on internships because um, first, number one, find your career center. My career center was literally in the process of being rebuilt when I got on campus. So my freshman year, we had like little to no resources available to actually get an internship. And then my sophomore year, that was my own fault as to why I didn't have an internship. Because the resources were there, I just didn't follow through. My junior year, I was able to get one, and then life happened, and it just it, we just weren't able to do it. Um, but if you can get an internship and you can get an internship in different aspects of your career, it'll be the best thing ever. Um, because I have had friends who are psych majors who went into HR internships and were like, I literally can't do that. I've had people who did it and loved it. Um, I've had people who went and they shadowed therapists and they shadowed people in different offices. Um, and they found spaces where they found they couldn't work. Um, I had one friend who she shadowed, the, she shadowed the, th she shadowed a therapist. Um, and then she shadowed another one, but in a psych hospital. And she was like, I can't do the hectic, um, routine of being in a hospital because it can be calm sometimes but not all the time because it's a hospital things happen so if you can do internships in your major in different aspects and different fields that would be honestly the best thing ever because you get to really narrow in down on how you want to build your career as well as also building your career network. You're meeting people in different aspects of your field that can help you get farther along within your field. So I just feel like that's very important to say. Yeah, interning is very important. Um, I've had a wishy-washy um, experience with interning. Um, my freshman year, I didn't get one. Um, I came into co college not really knowing what um, internships were really about anyway. Um, it was kind of crazy. I didn't really have um that that type of thing expressed to me um during school or during high school. But um sophomore year, I was um trying to get an internship after um a few people in my circle had got a couple and I had realized, oh well, you know, these big name companies are giving these small people, you know, big jobs, you know. So I was trying to find one um and I wasn't able to find one. But um my father kind of like let me know like, hey, if you, if you can't get an internship, you need to be somewhere, you need to be doing something. So I say for the people, you know, who aren't necessarily getting these internships, but are interested, I say, um, talk to everybody, um, get yourself out there. Um, you have to get out of your room, you have to email people, you have to check your email. 
you have to um I feel like as a college student it's kind of hard not to do this but a lot of times we leave the door open we'll try so hard trying to reach somebody and then by the time we finally reach them it's like they'll email us back and then we're like all right bet we got the email we're happy about getting the email but it's like we so happy about getting the email that we don't follow through with what we were trying to do in the first place so ultimately I say um follow through um and interning is a it's a fun experience um I haven't done like a set internship like over the summer or anything but I have been working with the NCRF um that's been really good um and I intern oh, I, I got a little small internship going on I'm actually interning a music fest coming to here in Atlanta soon so that's gonna be fun so yeah just get you get you you gotta get yourself out there so interning is really important though you get to see different avenues so that's really important um I had so many internships I feel like maybe not so many but I had like three in college um and I learned my first internship was indeed rough um and it was a very in it was like kind of like that in between period of COVID so it was like virtual um so and it was like a it was an interesting company like it wasn't they like ran the more I like got into it, the more I realized that they ran most of the company on interns. Mm -hmm. So make sure you do your research. Like I was just like coming off of COVID and I was like, well, I'm like, I can't really go into class much. So like, I would like to also have an internship and like do something else. Um, and I didn't have much experience. So I just went with who took me and it was very, I learned a lot because like they taught me a lot. Um, but it also was like, I was also overworked because they ran most of their internship, most of their business on interns. So it was very interesting, but it did make me a hard worker. And then my second two internships, my one junior year and my one senior year were like my absolute favorite things to do. And it really just kind of, my senior year internship was a rock nation. And it like made me realize I wanted to like get into music marketing, but it is like a really hard business to get into. So like, I like try to keep connected to like, like my managers there and, and all that and like to the music business so I can like maybe get back in there but like I will say that I had friends that had an internship that like turned into a job or turned into at least an interview so like my advice is if you can like snag an internship that like says in their description they will interview you for a job or they will offer you a job at the end of the internship if you do good I would do that because I, as much as I had the best time, like, I feel like I gave, I did a lot of hard work and like, wasn't or rewarded, I guess. So that's my only thing. Like the experience is important, obviously, but the job market is like so hard. So especially like right now, like maybe by the time some of you guys are interning, it won't be as hard, but if you can try to get an internship that kind of leads to a job, do that because everybody likes hiring internally so it doesn't matter like where you go so I would that would be like my advice when you decide to be motivated to intern especially your senior year maybe not your junior year but your senior year definitely like try to find an internship where they like say something about a potential job offer at the end I think that's all very good advice that you guys all gave um I don't know if anybody else wants to share because I want to kind of tie it up with the bow yeah I did not realize how long we went I'm you um, can tie it up. <laughs> okay, so internships in 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 college are so oh my god, they're just like don't miss out, especially if you have people in your department looking at you and speaking highly of how you work, your work ethics and you know, wanting to know more about you. I mean, those are always the 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 test to see if you are you are, you know, hireable, like people around you in your class are looking up to you, or you're always being called on for a project. Those are always the test to know that you can do the work outside of college. And that is, I always tell people, I said, this is what it is. College is easy. It really is compared to real life. Once you graduate, you don't have that same community. So build the network and the relationships all that you can. So when you graduate, you'll have more to it before you leave. And you can depend not just on your own understanding, but you can still lean on your colleagues who you went to school with or still call your professors and cultivate a bigger relationship that's more professional outside of that. And they may have a job for you or they may have an you know, opportunity for you. 
the key thing is, is to follow up. Just like Henri said, you can literally get emails, knock on doors all day by sending out messages, you know, asking and applying. But if you don't reply back or go the extra mile by making the phone call or showing up and saying, hey, I just want to just check in and say hello. I'm just, if anything available, then the, you it will literally go past you. You cannot depend on Indeed or job posting because those um, job posts and Indeed and other websites that track your resume, they use algorithms. And if the algorithm does not follow the prompts or if your resume does not follow the prompts of what the algorithm is looking for, that the recruiters kind of highlighted what they're looking for, then you, the recruiters will never see your resume. It will go into a folder that never gets revealed. So when people are applying, you have to understand that it's more to it than just sending out your resume and calling and, and looking online. It's actually going to places and making yourself present. You have to do it old school way. I didn't have that luxury when I was growing up. I had to door knock. I had to get out there. And I was not that type of person to go get it all the time. I literally wanted to come to me. And I didn't take as many opportunities. And that was my detriment as an undergrad. But when I got into graduate school, I was knocking on every door, but then COVID hit. I literally went to Cedar Sinai and said, I want to work here. What can I do? I don't care what route you put me in. I want to intern here. And they literally put me in a route that got me hired. It took me three months and then all of a sudden COVID hit. So there's opportunities for you guys and use them all to your betterment. College is so much fun if you allow it to be fun, but it's, it's horrible. If you just don't take it as like, this is not, this is not as bad as it looks because once you graduate, it's when they put the scalpel, like if you're becoming a, a doctor, once they put that, that instrument in your hand and says, save that person's life. That's when the real work starts, not on play, play in college and just learning. No, it starts when they actually tell you to perform and save somebody's life and your project is due and it's going to, you know, it's part of the company. So that's what I want to say to my closing. Okay. So a quick one-liner tip trick, you know, so we can wrap this up and let our freshmen go on and enjoy their first semester of college. Who wants to go first? Get involved. Oh, I didn't even know. Oh, go ahead. No, you can talk. I didn't even know she was trying to say tips or a trick. I thought she was about to make a statement. Oh, I just couldn't find anything that rhymed. It's okay. We can move on past it. I was going to say, oh, well, I lost it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Next one. I'm so sorry for cutting you off. <laughs> no, it's okay. That's ADHD for you, girl. I'm like, <laughs> um, so sorry. <laughs> repeat repeat what you said again. Um, a quick like, one-liner of a tip or a trick for the freshmen so they can go on about their yeah. semesters. Um, I'll I, I say I got one. Um, a quick one. Just be involved. Um. Put yourself out there. Um, that's pretty much all I really can say. It's simple. Just put yourself out there. If you put yourself out there, you'll find yourself in some situations where some jobs or some responsibilities are going to be put in your hands. And you ain't going to have no choice but to be busy. And you look up, you probably have a job off the offer. Um, yeah, just be heavily involved. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, find your balance with having fun. You can have it all. Uh, you can go to all the parties you want and still do your work just and just stand up be about your business and you'll be okay but um don't take college too serious i say have your fun because you're gonna miss it it's really the best time of your life um, i would say like your reputation precedes you like be careful kind of like the precedent you sent um like tiana said you don't have to be like super serious all the time but just be careful like people remember how you treat them or certain things you did or didn't do, like it does matter. So just like be yourself, but also remember that and remember that it carries on even outside of like college, like that network matters. So when you get out of college and you need something, you know, somebody might remember, like if you did something that wasn't cool or you were shady or whatever. So just like always be cool, be yourself, carry yourself in a certain type of way that, and you know, the golden rule, I guess, treat others how you want to be treated. It sounds simple, but like that really is the like, key. So that's my trick. I actually really like that one. Um, but I kind of wish you didn't. Yeah, Haley. 
Um, Haley, that was good. <laughs> hey, do you have one? Um, did oh you said Kobe Ray? Okay. Yeah. Mm. I would. We <laughs> can come back. Um, and I would really say it's more like a life thing. I feel like, but like I really believe that like life is about balance and everybody's perception of balance is very like different it's your own perception like balanced is perception so if that means that that you want to balance for you is two jobs and you only hang out with your friends in the weekend then that's that but like you need to have balance so you can work and play essentially and I think that like that's a thing that you learn a lot of in college and it's going to help you a lot and then it's also going to help you in real life so that is my tip and trick is to learn your balance I love that okay Denise do you want to give one more before I end it off I just I honestly to sum up what you guys said it's just you know take risk have fun like college is about taking risks just have take as many calculated risk as far I'm not talking about going bungee jumping drunk and doing something stupid at a at a frat party that's what I'm not talking about or it's not high school you know Haley said it best you know like be very mindful of the relationships you're building because they will come to get you at the end but it's not high school so don't take on those high school mentality and you can start fresh in college like nobody knows you like you can really be who you really want to be in a positive way. Don't be fake. If that makes sense, you guys, like just take risks, go, go for the go gold and enjoy it. Okay. So we're going to wrap this up with find a balance and be involved, sit on campus, be outside. Um, but also get your work done. Um, and that whatever pathway you have is not going to look like everybody else's. So your balance and you being outside and you being involved is going to look completely different from the person sitting next to you and your best friend. And those two people can be completely different people and they both can be great people in your lives. Um, so enjoy college, have a good time, meet new people, enjoy freshman year. It's, you you get one freshman year of undergrad, take it nice. All right, and that'll be the end of NCRS, Elevate Your Game, Freshman 101, Tips and Tricks. See you guys next time.